Thank you for joining uh, Junk to Jewels podcast with Georgette Beck. And today I'm so excited. I have a wonderful, beautiful sister in the Lord with us to share her beautiful story and her life's journey with you. Her name is Jessica and she is with Two Cups, Two Mics. That's one word. And you can find her on the Facebook social media platform and YouTube as well. She is a digital marketing specialist and a co-founder of Golf Media, a marketing agency. And she's a Christian podcaster. She was born in Takrande, Ghana, and the Western region of Ghana. So how exciting is that? And she's going to just share who she is. And Jessica, welcome to the show. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you for having me here. God bless you for having me here. So, and thank you, everybody. Thank you. So basically, I'm Jessica, like Georgia said, and um, this is me. This is me, basically. This is me. I'm a digital marketing strategist. I was born by a Ghanaian man and then half Italian woman and half Ghanaian woman. And I happen to be the only girl in four boys. So, yeah. And, uh, four yeah. boys. Oh, my goodness. Four gracious. boys. Yeah. And, and I'm in the middle of them. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was born in Takrade. I was born in Takrade, Western region, which is in Ghana. So, growing up, growing up, I was a church goer. I'd have said I was a Christian if I didn't know better, but I was a church goer because I grew up with my parents going to church. So I was also going to church, but it, I was not going to church because I knew God or anything. I was going to church because my parents go to church. So it's a tradition basically, but it doesn't have a meaning for me. So I was, I kept going to church till I was 16 years old, 16 years old. And I remember when I was in here, we call it junior high school. I was in junior high school. And then some of my friends started having the menstrual period and everything, but then I, I didn't have mine yet. So you know how girls talk? Yeah, I'm a girl now, and then like I'm basically not a girl. That's what they were saying. So <laughs> I'm okay with it till till I graduated to senior high school, and then I was 16 years as a thing. I was in senior high school, and all the girls were menstruating and everything, and I still didn't have my menstrual period. And later that year, my menstrual period came. So I was very excited. I was very excited. I'm a woman now and everything. And because I didn't know God closely, I didn't have an intimate relationship with God. I was just going to church. I didn't have an intimate relationship with God. So the very first time I had my menstrual period, which happened to come like two days and then it stopped. And then people were telling me, oh, it's normal for the first period and everything. So I was like, okay, fine. So this is normal. So I didn't have my period again that very year. I didn't have it again. And I thought it was normal. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then the following year, I had my menstrual period. And I had it straight for two months. Wow. It didn't stop. Two months. Stop. Two months straight. That must have been very scary when that first day war. Right. It was hap it was very scary because it was not that it was coming as a normal period. I said then I thought it was normal, but it was not coming as a normal period because I had to change like um I had to change like four times a day. I had yeah. to change like four times a day. So it was very uncomfortable. So I asked a friend, is this normal? Is this thing normal? And then and my friend said, oh no, your period is actually supposed to come for one week yeah. or at that at most or three days. Yeah. Right. So I, I, in school here in Ghana, in senior high school, we don't use phones in school. 
So when I went back home, I went on Google, started Googling, checking and everything. And you know how Google can scare you up, can scare you. Yes. So I was already scared. I was already scared. So I told my mom, this is what is happening to me. Oh. And yeah. And she was like, we should go to the hospital. So we went to the hospital. The doctors gave me out, they gave me contraceptives. Yes. Yes. Is yes. that, that yes. helps the flow or manages the flow uh, here too. They gave that to us. Yes. Yeah. Right. They gave me contraceptive to regulate it. It didn't work. It didn't work. It became worse. Um. It became worse to the extent that I had to leave school for a full semester. I didn't go to school for one full semester because I was menstruating throughout the whole semester. And I literally was not able to leave my room. Oh my gosh. And what did your, what did your family think? Like, what did my, cause you have no idea like what's happening. Dad was scared. My mom was scared because nobody, nobody has an idea of what is happening. Yeah. It was scary. Cause literally I wake up and sleep and then I'd have to change my bed sheet cause my bed sheet is already loaded with blood. Um, my dress is already uh, stained. Everything. Oh my so God. All I do is just stay in the room. Yeah. They bring me food. They bring me medicines. Cause that's what the doctors knew. And then later my dad was like, let's change the hospital. So we changed the hospital and then the doctors were like, they would check my blood and everything. They did a whole lab test, did a whole thing. They also put me on a different contraceptive. It still didn't work. Still didn't so work. I went, no, it still didn't work. So I, I was beginning to look like I was, I was like somebody that is literally about to die because I have lost blood. I didn't have strength to do anything, anything. So my pastor came around, he prayed with me and everything. So at a point I was scared because nothing is working. Some doctors were even trying to check if I had cancer or something. There was a whole lot of things. Uh, some of the doctors were like, okay, you, your male estrogen is more than your female estrogen. However, uh, um, your eggs are a lot. So when it's time for you to menstruate, it doesn't, it doesn't just break in, uh, the normal way. It just breaks a lot. So I was like, I was literally scared. And then I went to a doctor and a, a different doctor who said that, um, I was, as I then like a whole year. So I was like 17. Then the doctor said I should give it because I would have to take my uterus out so that I become normal as a 17. And I didn't have a boyfriend. I mean, did they, they had to do it or they were saying they, they need to do it. They said, they said they need to do it. Cause that's my only solution right now. Cause they've tried all the solutions it's not working. So I sat then I was like, like, I don't have anybody. I'm I literally, I'm not ready for a relationship. I'm not ready to even get married right now. Give back right now. Whose child is going to allow and uh, whose mother or whose parent is going to allow their son marry a woman with that problem just because of a baby. It's not going to happen. And so the doctors were like, I need to remove my uterus. So daddy said, no, she's 17 years. You can just take her opportunity to give birth just like that. So no, let's keep her uterus. Let's just keep it. So it got deeper and deeper and more scarier. So I was lying on the bed and I was like, God, you need to help me. Cause that's at this point, it's like, I don't have any help. I don't know when I'm even going to die. Cause at the point I used to go to the hospital and my daddy would transfer blood for me. Cause I didn't have blood in me. It was bad. And I was like, I don't know when I'm going to die. Cause it, it usually looks like I'm about to die. 
or something. I don't have a purpose. So this is why I was brought on air to just suffer and die. I was saying all kinds of things. So at some point I felt like maybe I need to know Jesus. So maybe I need to know God. Maybe I need to understand who he is. Something. And the little strength I had, I kept lying on the bed, praying and everything. So I woke up one night to Google and take, to pee, to just pee at the bathhouse. And then apparently, I don't know what happened to my parents, but they came to my room to check up on me. No, no, I don't know what happened afterwards, but I think they said that I was not breathing. I was not breathing again. I was just lying on the floor at the bathhouse. So they thought I was dead, like I'm gone because she's not breathing, nothing is happening to her again. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to the hospital and then the doctors were declaring me dead already. Oh my so God. my daddy, my daddy was like, no, my daughter can't die just like that. So he was like, you just yeah. leave her on the bed. Yeah, just leave her on the bed for some time. And if you come after probably, I think my daddy said 15 minutes time and she's not awake, you can just do whatever you want to do. So they said the doctors left, they were just ready to just pack me to the mortuary or something and then just do the next three things. And so my daddy said, before they realized I was coughing and my eyes had opened and then they were like, he, he rushed to call the doctor that I told you she's not dead. I told you she's not dead. So the doctors were like, everybody was surprised. Like I woke up with like everybody looking at me, looking at me weirdly. Everybody was surprised. And they discharged me after some days. So I went home and I was like, you know what? I think I need to join the prayer warriors. Like those who pray extra and church. Because I need to know God. I need to know yes. Jesus. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I just need to know who Jesus is. And I joined the prayer warriors. But as I then I was saved from death, but not saved from the measure issues yet. Right. But I just well, I was so desperate to know Jesus. So I kept going to church. I kept going to church. This is, this is somebody who happens to be a student, but now it looks like he's a school dropout. She's not even in school again because of her whole life and everything. So I kept going to church, kept going to church. My daddy would drop me in church, pick me up because I didn't have strength to go on my own. Pick me up, drop me, pick me up, drop me, pick me up, drop me. So at a point, I started getting closer to God. I got the gifting of tongues and everything i started like, getting closer to god i started like, understanding who he is and everything and i went to the hospital again this is the case where my measure period moved from un uh, uh, unstoppable to it now it became a two weeks measure period it, it doesn't come for all those years and then right now it doesn't like come as it used to come and it comes monthly but then it doesn't stay long again. So I was so excited. And the doctors, at the point, the doctors declared me that, okay, even if we keep her uterus, she's not going to be able to give birth. Yeah. So I thought I was a, I thought I was a barren or something. So I was even scared. I was like, it's, I've literally not done anything before and then I'll not have babies. Oh, so I at some point I was like, you know, uh -huh. I got a prompting in my heart to actually go to the hospital. So I told my parents that I think we need to go back to the hospital for a checkup. And my parents were like, oh, your checkup time is not due. I was like, I just, I feel like we should just go for the checkup. But in state. So, we, yeah. So we went for the checkup and then the doctors came back with a report and they said, for some reason, you're super fertile right now. We don't understand you're very, very fertile right now. And then and I was just sitting there, I was like, I feel like I know who is doing this. I feel like I know it's no human being. I feel like I know it's no doctor right now. So the funny thing the doctor told me that whatever you're doing, keep doing it. That's what he told me. I was like, I feel like 
did they do you did you know what this was called at that time did they give you this because there's a name for what you're going through what you went through did they give you that diagnosis yeah okay so they did give my parents but i felt like my parents knew that okay i said then i was so much of like let me go and google let me go and read about it let me go and do research about it. and my parents didn't want to scare me so they had all the reports to themselves they didn't want to tell me anything to go and google to get scared about anything or um think about it going to depression or anything of sort so i was like okay so i i literally got the report and the doctors were like oh you're super fertile but you still menstruate three weeks and that is weird because you're supposed to be you're not supposed to be fertile and everything and I was like, well, I think I know the person that is doing this. So, and the person, I think he took this person out more than all of you. That's what I said to them. He took this thing person out. So I went, I went home and then I go back to school and everything. This is the time where I go back to school. My lecture, my lecturers were like, oh, she was already intelligent. So we're just going to fast forward here so that she she leaves school with her friends, but then I didn't have any knowledge as to what they learned within the, I stayed home for almost like a year. I didn't have any knowledge about what they learned. I don't know where I'm going to pick it. So they were like, okay, you know what? You, um, you do extra classes so that when you close from class, you go to extra classes and then pick it up from them. So I was a bit scared. And then is that bit all oh, we here in senior high school, we go to senior high school for two and a half years, and then we go to the university. So I was like, how am I going to pick this thing up? Because we are almost about to, I've already gone to school one year, I've stayed home for one year. Is that really half a year for me to complete school and everything? So I was literally going to school, I was asking the Holy Spirit, I said, then I understood that the Holy Spirit is our guide and everything. So I was asking him to help me, guide me out and everything. So I was studying and everything, but everything felt weird for me because this is senior high school. I've never been to senior high school before. No lecturer is teaching me. I'm studying on my own. I don't even know how to solve all these things. I have to use YouTube and everything to study right now. So we're going to write the final exams. I was very scared. I was like, what if I don't pass? What do I do? Do I go back to senior high school and everything? So I had this feeling in me, this peace. You know when you are scared, but you have peace at the same time. The yeah, I had understanding. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, I had peace in me. I was like, okay. So I went to write the exams, and it takes three months before your final result comes out. So when the three months came. I was scared to go and check my final result. What if I don't pass? What do I do? Do I go back? What do I do? What do, what do I do? So I went for my results and to my surprise, I got four A's, three B's and one C. And I was like, wait, is this my, did I just pass my, did I just pass my exams? Did I just pass? Am I just going to university or something? Am I just going to university or something? So that's how I got to know God. That's how I got to be close with God. I understood that. That's what I understood what David said, that fear though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for he is with me. That's, that's right. what I understood. Yeah. It doesn't, so I understood. Yeah. So I understood that it doesn't mean the way you become a Christian, everything is going to go smoothly. You're going to go through the darkest time of your life, but God is there with you. With you. So, yeah. With us. You know, Jessica, that is so powerful. That is so powerful, your journey. And look at you. You're thriving. You're beautiful. You have a yeah. ministry. Two cups, two mics. And thank you so much for having me on as a guest. Um, sharing so thank you. What a, great, what a great platform and a great idea. And I just love it. Love your heart. We're wrapping up. The time goes so fast. Do you have a favorite yeah. scripture? Maybe that one that you just said, but is there a favorite scripture? I know so many good ones. 
Yeah, but that that's literally the scripture that has guided me. That's the scripture that has guided me. So I think that's my favorite scripture. But I like the last part. Fear though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you with me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And that's my favorite scripture. Amen. Is there a favorite book you like to read? Is there one that really touched you or helped you? Yeah, so um, the book that I read was my favorite book that I read when I became a Christian is the Good Morning Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn. Good Morning Holy Spirit by who? Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn. Ben, like yeah. 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 He's, he's he, had a powerful ministry too. Yeah, he does. He That book made me personalize my relationship with God. Like he made me personalize the Holy Spirit. Like he's a real person like he's a real person if you take him real he's going to show himself real to you so yeah yeah that's my favorite another too. question i always like to ask if you could sit down and have a cup of coffee or a tea with anyone um from the past or the present who would you choose and why i would choose catching coleman i would choose catching coleman what is the name catching Ka coleman catching coleman Yes. Why? Yeah. Because I don't know. She she knows that the way she describes the Holy Spirit, she makes you want to know him. She makes you want to know him. So I really want to hear from her mouth, her experience with the Holy Spirit. I love it. I love, I love, it. Still here. I, I love it. And is there someone that's impacted you personally in your life, like a mentor, a teacher, someone who did just said something so profound that kept you on your path or enlightened you? Yeah. Okay. So I'll say um, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Archbishop um, Nicholas Duncan Williams. Yeah. He in your church? Somebody that, yes, in my journey, he's somebody that actually has impacted in my life with the way he teaches and everything. Even when you um, go, you are going astray. It's like after listening to him, you just want to go back to God and say, "God, I'm sorry. Can we mend this up and then start over again?" So yeah, Amen. I love it. Oh, yeah. How important we are, people. We are to each other because you know, like someone just comes along and gives you a hug on one day, or they say something, or they just give yeah. you a whole new truth that changes your whole life. <laughs> So it's yeah. very great. Jessica, I support you and what you're doing. I applaud you. You got to keep Thank showing you. up for Jesus and, um, and just reach out to someone else. Now, what would you say Thank to you. someone who's struggling with this condition? And there's the name and I can't pronounce it. Men, her it's M E N O R R H A G I A and Polly M E N O R R H E A. And it's what it is. Yeah. It's, very, it could be dangerous and life threatening, as Jessica well knows. Um, but it's when yeah. uh, folks 18 through 35 usually in the U.S. experience this, but it's all over people experience this, as as you heard. Um, it's when your men, your 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 menstrual, I can't even say that word. Our our periods, women <laughs> menstruation cycle. I can't even say it. Yeah, your menstrual cycle. <laughs> oh my gosh. But your heart is so awesome. I hope you come back on the show. And if sure, then, I would love to. What would you say to that one person that is just finding out this and they're in this, in that moment, struggling with this condition? I would say that above all the doctors and everything, get to know Jesus, get to know God, because he's the perfect doctor he's a perfect doctor for you right now he's a perfect doctor for you right because nobody can understand you like he can understand you nobody understands what you're going through like he knows what you're going through yeah. so get closer to god exactly and have faith amen get closer to jesus and, have faith. and yeah it's real god jesus holy spirit Thank you, Jessica. Thank you so much for sharing your heart and being vulnerable and sharing your experiences. I know it's going to touch a lot of hearts and encourage a lot of people. And you know what? No matter what your age, young, old, 
<laughs> go do what God yeah. wants to do in your heart. Step out in faith and share your story, share your life. Just go out there and be be open and, and be a blessing to someone today. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Thank you for joining in with Junk to Jewels podcast with your dread Beck. And today you um, got to know Jessica with two cups, two mics. Check her out on YouTube and Facebook. And don't forget, if you're not following Georgette Beck on uh, Facebook or Instagram, please go ahead and follow. And then please uh, download this show and, and follow Junk to Jewels podcast with Georgette Beck. We have several guests coming along to share their challenging moments and their inspiration. Thank you for listening and watching. Take care.